Hi everyone, it's Patricia, here to wish you a happy Professional Wellness Month. If you're an employer or a business leader and you're looking to improve the wellness culture of your workplace, this video is for you. It has never been more apparent than now that it is absolutely necessary for employers to start focusing on their employees' well-being. Over the past two years, we've experienced increasing levels of professional burnout, the great resignation, and intensifying mental health concerns, with 76% of employees experiencing mental health challenges in 2021, which is up from 59% in 2019. Not to mention the growing rates of chronic diseases and obesity in our society, which are costing employers billions in healthcare expenses and loss of productivity. June is Professional Wellness Month, a month dedicated for employers and business leaders to focus on and improve the wellness culture for their employees within their workplace. I've had several conversations this month with business leaders who were interested to hear what the most important steps were so they could create a business culture that supported their employees' well-being. Many of these businesses used this month to start offering healthy lunches in the break room, a few additional days off for staff outings or team building activities, and group fitness classes before and after work. I absolutely love these options to begin creating that supportive wellness environment. But what these business leaders really wanted to know was how they could continue to support their employees' well-being well beyond the month of June, even when they're not in the office. In this video, I want to share with you some of the tips that I encouraged them to put in place within their own businesses to help encourage and support the well-being and the health of their employees, and why this is extremely important when it comes to the growth and success of your business. Now let's first talk about the cost of unhealthy employees. As I mentioned before, our society is starting to realize just how important it is to help our employees focus on their health. But in the midst of tight deadlines, client demands, and growing and scaling a business, it can easily be pushed to the side. When employers think of increasing and improving their staff's productivity, health and well-being isn't necessarily top of mind, but it should be. Research continually shows that healthy employees are the most productive. According to the HERO report, Conducted by researchers at Brigham Young University, employees who had an unhealthy diet were 66% more likely to experience loss of productivity when compared to employees who had healthier dietary patterns. Employees who did not exercise regularly had a 50% increased risk of loss of productivity compared to those who did. What's more, if employees found it difficult to exercise during their workday, there was a 96% increased risk of loss of productivity. Now, most of these productivity losses are due to presenteeism, when an employee attends work but is unwell. However, productivity losses due to absenteeism, when an employee does not attend work because they are ill, is a whole other ballgame. Obesity and the chronic health conditions that accompany it are thought to be a major contributor to absenteeism. Obesity raises job absenteeism by 128% each year. National productivity losses due to this condition reached up to $26.8 billion in 2016. This is a definite concern for business owners as the obesity rates in the United States continue to rise. 38% of men and 42% of women are now considered obese. In total, health-related productivity losses now account for 77% of total productivity losses in the workplace. And they cost employers between two to three times more than their annual healthcare expenses. The risk of productivity losses due to presenteeism and absenteeism are even greater when these physical health conditions are comorbid with psychological health conditions. As I said before, mental health concerns are on the rise. Between 30 and 50% of the United States adult population experiences mental health challenges. And between 50 and 60% of these adults do not receive proper treatment for these illnesses. Now this statistic is concerning in and of itself, but especially when it comes to workplace productivity. Employees with untreated mental health conditions, such as depression, experience a 35% reduction in productivity, and around 32 workdays are lost due to presenteeism from a mental health condition over the course of an employee's work span. To further exacerbate this issue, what tends to accompany mental health issues? Lack of sleep. And what accompanies lack of sleep? You got it, decreased work performance. Losing only two hours of sleep per night is the equivalent of drinking three beers. Now, I don't know about you, but after three beers, I don't get much done. So it should come as no surprise that 97% of fatigued workers experience a reduction in cognitive performance. And as you guys probably know from experience, 
lack of sleep results in increased energy intake in the form of, we'll call it, less nutritious foods. We've all been there before. 1 a.m., you can't sleep, so you head to the freezer to see what treats you can get into. Unfortunately, this too has negative consequences as it relates to work performance. Those who engaged in unhealthy eating habits throughout the night were less productive the following day. This all being said, an employee's health is directly related to their work performance, your business's healthcare costs, and at the end of the day, the growth of your business. And although it may seem like a nice to have when compared to other workplace productivity measures that you have in place, supporting an employee's health is an absolute must if you want to grow your business. Unfortunately, too many businesses don't have the right dial movers in place to support their employees' overall health and well being. Here are a few unique, fun, sustainable, and evidence based tools that you can put in place to ensure lasting wellness for your entire team. First, offer a better breakfast. Employers have great intentions when they offer free breakfast for their employees. Research does show that the quality of your thinking is dependent on the first meal of your day, so it is important to make sure your employees aren't starting their day hungry. However, most of the businesses I've been to, though well-intentioned, are offering their employees the wrong breakfast. Muffins, bagels, croissants, fruit juices are considered high glycemic carbohydrates. This means that these meals will cause blood glucose and blood insulin spikes, which can result in inflammation, oxidative stress, and an increased risk of weight gain and obesity. Not only does this type of breakfast have negative health consequences, but it can also result in that dreaded productivity killing mid-morning energy crash. Instead of this traditional type breakfast spread, try offering your employees breakfast foods that are high in fiber, fat, and protein. My second tip is to remove coffee from the break room around 2 p.m. every day. Okay, hear me out. I know this sounds crazy, but this is one of those short-term losses for long-term gains type of tips. Although you'll have some pretty cranky and tired workers for the first few days, helping your employees to have a caffeine cutoff can help to improve their sleep quality and thus their work performance in the long run. Again, as you probably know from experience, drinking too much caffeine, especially later in the day, can cause a decrease in sleep quantity and sleep quality and make it harder for you to fall asleep once you get in bed. If you're looking to improve the health and the performance of your employees, helping them to get good quality sleep is a must and therefore making it easier for them to have a caffeine cutoff can be extremely beneficial. My third tip is to create a post-lunch walking culture. As I mentioned before, when employees find it hard to get exercise throughout their workday, they're at a 96% increased risk for loss of productivity. So it's important to create a culture where your employees feel like they can get up and get moving, even if it's only for a few minutes a day. Now this productivity effect can be compounded if it's scheduled after lunch. Getting some movement in after eating can help to lessen the blood glucose and insulin spikes that accompany meals. Less of a glucose and insulin spike means less of a risk for that productivity killing mid afternoon energy crash, similar to the mid morning energy crash, but it just happens after lunch. This will help your employees to remain energetic and productive all afternoon long. And of course, the physical health benefits that accompany more movement and less insulin, such as cardiovascular benefits, metabolic health benefits, and many more. Fourth tip is to decorate your kitchen with healthy reminders. Studies have shown that when individuals in the workplace frequent environments where they're displayed posters that describe a social norm of their colleagues consuming more vegetables with their meals, they will also consume more vegetables. I probably don't have to tell you that increased vegetable intake is correlated with many physical health benefits, mental health benefits, and cognitive performance benefits. When individuals believe the norm of their colleagues is to eat more vegetables, they will do the same. Posters that display messages such as, did you know most employees choose to eat vegetables with their lunch, help to promote the societal norm. These interventions were even shown to increase vegetable intake in employees even after the posters were removed. This potentially points to long-term behavior change as a result of trying to match their colleagues' behaviors. Finally, encourage, promote, and fund your employees' participation in my MindPeak coaching program. Helping employees adhere to healthy behaviors while they're at the office is a great first step towards improving their overall well-being. However, what they do with the rest of their 128 hours per week that they spend outside of work is even more important when it comes to lasting health and lifestyle change. 
That's why it's important to encourage your employees to participate in a one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching program that is designed specifically to help busy professionals optimize their health to optimize their performance. This is exactly what my Mind Peak coaching program is all about. In this program, I work together with my clients to develop a nutrition and lifestyle protocol that addresses their underlying health conditions that may be contributing to their loss of productivity. We do so in a way that fits their busy lifestyle, their needs, their underlying biology, and of course, their preferences. Together, we work to develop skills that they need to transform their health and to maintain this transformation for life. Not only do the clients in my program lose weight and improve all markers of their physical health, but they have more energy, reduced stress, clearer thinking, and sharper focus. They feel as though they are more productive both in and out of the office. A total win-win for both them and their employers. To find out if you or your employees would be a good fit for my MindPeak program, sign up for a free 30-minute consultation with the link below. It has come time that we recognize the importance of an employee's well-being, both for their improved work performance and their overall life satisfaction. Healthy, happy employees will ensure that your business grows and produces the way that you want it to. By helping your employees transform their health, you will ensure that you reduce the risk of presenteeism, absenteeism, and of course, your healthcare costs. You will also increase your employee retention. Studies are showing that healthy eating is associated with low levels of burnout symptoms. At the end of the day, you want the individuals who are driving the ship of your business to optimize all pieces of their performance, which begins with optimizing their health. This Professional Wellness Month, work with your company to design a culture of health for your entire workplace. This way, your employees' health, well-being, and increased productivity will last well beyond June. Thanks for watching today, everyone. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you're an employer or business leader and you're looking to improve the health and well-being of your employees, sign up for a free 30-minute consultation with the link below. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share it with a friend. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay healthy.